Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. I'm back for my week off, had a fantastic time on holiday up in New South Wales, but as it turns out, a lot has been happening while I've been away. Most notably, a disastrous launch for Red Dead Redemption 2 with all sorts of issues ranging from constant crashing, people being unable to launch the game entirely, and of course, poor performance on high quality settings. Today I'm going to tackle some of that, probably not going to be able to solve the crashing issues, that's on Rockstar Games, who by the way, they did have 12 months to get this right. Pretty disgraceful that in all that time, they didn't bother to do vigorous QA on a variety of PC configurations, but hey, wouldn't be the first time PC gamers have been asked to wait for a port uh, that when it does arrive, arrives broken and in a pretty terrible state. What I will be able to tackle though is performance. This game looks absolutely incredible on ultra settings, definitely one of the best looking games I've played on PC, but performance leaves a lot to be desired. Even something as powerful as an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Super struggles to deliver 40 to 50 FPS with everything maxed out except MSAA at a mere 1440p, which is well below the performance we've come to expect from this card at this resolution in other titles. A lot of that is because Rockstar has gone crazy with graphics settings for the PC version. Channels like Digital Foundry have already discovered that console versions such as the Xbox One X run the game at a mixture of settings that often include includes the equivalent of low or even below low quality settings. So when you push the PC version up much higher, in some ways the game does improve substantially, in other ways the improvements are extremely subtle, yet cost a ton in terms of frame rate. As always with our optimization guides, we'll be going through and finding the best balance of graphics quality and performance so you can enjoy Red Dead Redemption 2 on your hardware, hopefully with frame rates well above 30 FPS. I've actually been able to recover a ton of performance here, often boosting frame rates by 40 to 50% with very minimal quality loss, which makes the game much more playable, so stay tuned to see how I've been able to make that happen. However, this video will only be covering half of Red Dead Redemption 2's graphics settings. If you've played the game, you'll have seen the massive amount of quality settings the game has to offer, split into standard and advanced options. Vigorously and accurately testing all of these settings in individual benchmark runs is very tedious, especially with the game that is you know, prone to issues and crashes. So to save this video from being an hour long and save me a bit of work for now, I'll be covering the advanced options in a separate video later this week. Even without touching the advanced options, Options, I'll still be showing you how to achieve huge performance gains today and I wanted to get this video out sooner so you guys can enjoy smooth gameplay as early as possible. I've nearly finished benchmarking for the advanced options and there'll be you know some more performance to be gained there as well so if you want to see part two leave a comment below expressing how you might want to see that sooner rather than later. Also want to do a quick shout out here for our merch store if you like these sorts of videos and find them super useful consider grabbing a hoodie like this one or a mug or you know whatever else you might want from the hardware unbox store all links are in the description below. Buying merch is a great way to support the channel directly and get a cool item in the process. So yeah, thanks for your support. All right, so let's talk about the test setup. Same as always, the performance results are an average of multiple runs using NVIDIA and AMD GPUs from several price categories. Although to remove any CPU bottlenecks, I am using my Core i9 9900K test rig with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Most gamers will be playing a Red Dead Redemption 2 while GPU bottlenecked. So even if you have something like a Ryzen 5 2600, the performance numbers should be still representative of what you'll be getting. Most of the benchmark runs are from the final scene of the built-in benchmark, which is a short walkthrough of the St. Denis area, one of the most intensive areas in the game, with some light action mixed in. It's highly repeatable, which is what we like to see. However, it doesn't do a great job of capturing the performance differences at night or with heavy water, such as near the rivers in the game. So for a few benchmarks, I have also taken some in-game runs. The results you'll see are designed to be representative of average performance in the game rather than doing spot checks which may only show brief worst case performance and let's be honest in a game like Red Dead Redemption 2 we're going to be pretty interested in boosting performance in every area of the game given how it currently runs. The visual comparisons are taken with an RTX 2080 Super at 1440p. We don't always represent the exact area we test for performance mostly because the visual comparisons are in game and the performance is from the benchmark. Most of the changes should be pretty visible but we still recommend watching this video at YouTube's maximum 4k quality setting because because the extra bit rate really does help for videos like this. As we're only covering half the settings in today's video, I'll quickly show our baseline settings. This is with everything on Ultra, including the advanced settings, with some exceptions. Water physics quality is one notch below maximum. This is from using the high water mode in the regular settings. 
I've also set reflection MSAA to four times rather than eight times because mostly eight times is often placebo quality. And I've got both FXAA and MSAA disabled entirely. Everything else is maxed out. All right, let's kick things off with a look at texture quality. This setting has a surprisingly high impact on visual quality, more than you normally see from turning down textures from ultra to high. You can see right from the start of this benchmark run that the cache register and bookshelf have hugely lowered texture quality with high versus ultra, and it only falls away further from there. Medium looks awful and low looks disgusting. In fact, it's pretty funny to see low textures paired with high quality trees and fur throughout the game. It's a pretty stark difference. Really, these settings should be renamed to provide added clarity. I think ultra should remain, but high really should be a low setting and low should become very low or something like that. When you look at performance, yeah, you can gain between three and 6% from switching away from ultra, but the visual downgrade is significant and widespread across the game. I wouldn't bother changing this from ultra unless you are running into VRAM limitations, in which case I'd recommend high. I try and avoid medium or low as much as you possibly can. Anisotropic filtering is the same here as in other games. It improves texture clarity when viewing items at odd angles and for distant objects. In most situations, there's a subtle difference between each of the five options, but when you stop and look closely, anything below four times anisotropic can deliver quite blurry and low resolution textures, even when you set the texture quality setting to ultra. Four times is the minimum I'd want to use here, but 16 times is a slight step up in quality that I feel is worth it. When viewing performance, again, 16 times becomes the obvious choice because of its improved visual quality compared to four times for only a marginal reduction to frame rate. If you're on an entry level hardware, you might consider the lower modes like two times, which bring up to a 3% performance improvement. But for most gamers, 16 times should be set and forget for Red Dead as well as most other games. Lighting quality is the first really interesting setting. In the daytime, this setting doesn't have much of an impact on visuals or performance. In fact, I found it very difficult to spot any differences during the day, and this is backed up by no performance difference in the daytime St. Denis benchmark run I was using. However, lighting quality at night has a huge impact on visuals and performance. Lighting from point sources such as lamps illuminate other objects at a greater distance with ultra and high modes, and you get more accurate lighting from the moon. The lights also become dynamic on high and above, mimicking the flickering of oil lamps, whereas medium is a bit static. In this scene in particular, you can see that the light source behind the camera is able to reach and illuminate the back of your character with the high mode, but not with medium. The differences are even more pronounced when in the city, such as Saint Denis at night, with ultra lighting quality illuminating many more surfaces, scenes can be brighter and more filled out compared to on high or especially medium, which have progressively darker looks. But honestly, even medium still looks fantastic in these scenes, and to me, anything higher looks decent, but ultimately is a bonus on top of already excellent visuals. And this is important because when you look at the performance, there is a significant gain to be had from turning lighting quality down to medium for night scenes. In the early game camp area where I tested, turning this setting from ultra to medium saw a 40% improvement to frame rates. Yep, that's right. 40%. This is often the difference between gaming at 35 FPS and 50 FPS. It's a massive, massive performance gain even when there aren't many light sources on the screen. In areas like St. Denis, the gains can be even higher, especially moving from just ultra to high. I sometimes saw 15 FPS gains from this single setting change alone at night in the biggest city in the game because there are so many light sources on the screen. And again, the game already looks great on medium in my opinion and it has no impact during the day. With low providing no additional performance, to me, this is a no brainer. If you're struggling with performance at night, which I think most people will be, moving ultra down to medium in this setting is the best choice to immediately resurrect performance. Global illumination, on the other hand, is a more subtle effect that I found quite hard to distinguish between. Ultra has slightly more accurate lighting than medium or low, but honestly, the differences here are not something you'll notice in general gameplay, especially between ultra and high. Given high delivers a 2% performance boost over ultra, I think this is a safe bet for most people, and with no advantage pushing this down to medium, it's what I'd choose to use. Most gamers will be pretty familiar with how shadow quality settings work. In Red Dead Redemption, it affects the resolution of shadows, so how many jagged shadow edges we see, along with draw distances in some situations, and sampling rate. It appears that ultra shadows for static objects are sampled at a higher rate than with high, although the difference can be pretty hard to notice. 
Aside from that, we get the usual differences. Ultra has the cleanest shadow edges. High is a small but noticeable downgrade, and then it really falls away with the medium and low modes, which have much less defined shadows that make it hard to distinguish the items that are casting the shadows. This can have a big impact in forested areas where the shadows from branches onto other trees really adds to the atmosphere. When looking at performance, there's an easy choice to make here. While Ultra does look better than High, the differences aren't significant enough in my opinion to justify a 5% performance difference. Most people will be really happy with the quality of high shadows I feel, so banking a 5% higher frame rate than Ultra I feel is worth it. Far shadow quality is much more subtle than general shadow quality. Part of the reason Red Dead's game world looks so dense and incredible is that even distant objects have some sort of shadowing. Far shadow quality affects the density and accuracy and even the resolution of these shadows. However, in both the benchmark and in some of the more open game areas, I saw basically no performance difference between the settings. There's a slight advantage shifting from ultra to high for almost no visual quality difference, so I think high is a good choice here. Screen Space Ambient Occlusion or SSAO affects ambient shadowing between objects, particularly in corners or other densely packed environments. The differences between Red Dead's three main modes are extremely subtle. Ultra has slightly denser and more accurate lighting than medium, but you'd be hard pressed to spot a significant difference, especially in motion. Where you really notice the change is turning SSAO off, which is something I don't recommend for modern games as SSAO adds so much depth and density to the game world. Inside the shop we've been looking at, turning off SSAO looks so flat and boring, almost like a game from five or 10 years ago. Yeah, when you look at performance, you can gain five to 6% from disabling SSAO, but the quality difference is huge, so I wouldn't recommend it. And if you're choosing between the SSAO modes, given there is no performance differences between all of them, I'd stick to Ultra for this one. Reflection quality is one of the most performance intensive settings in the game, and often it chugs along without much of a visual upgrade on the higher settings. Yes, having reflections cranked up to ultra delivers high quality, high resolution reflections, and often on surfaces like glass, it will reflect objects behind you, similar to ray tracing, but you know, without ray tracing. But on other surfaces like puddles, it's much harder to spot the changes. While ultra reflections are spectacular and very high quality, they're quite hard to notice unless you stop and admire them in windows. When moving around, high or medium reflections are a decent substitute, and while low is still okay as far as these sorts of reflections are concerned, they often make windows look dirty or translucent as the reflection resolution is quite low. When benchmarking the game, reflection quality has a huge impact. In the St. Denis benchmark pass, for example, I saw a 15% performance improvement simply moving down from ultra to high, and ultra compared to medium is more like a 20% gain with diminishing returns with low. Yeah, ultra reflections are a huge upgrade over the console version of the game, which is lower than low setting, but given how unlikely you are to actually notice the change in real gameplay, switching down to medium and banking that large performance gain is a great idea. Mirror quality is like reflection quality, but only for the various mirrors in the game, such as when you buy a hotel room. Simple resolution downgrade with each setting here. There is a small performance downgrade in areas with mirrors like this, but given these scenes tend not to be very intensive anyway, I'd leave the setting on ultra as the lower modes quickly get quite pixelated and ugly. Another really intensive setting in Red Dead Redemption 2 is water quality, although naturally the impact is most severe when water is actually on screen. This isn't like shadow quality where it has a universal performance impact. The big change here is high versus medium. High water quality has a better surface simulation, better reflections, and better refractions. High here looks really good and very lifelike in some regards. It is quite impressive, but medium also looks decent, and I'd prefer that to low, which doesn't have the same level of wave quality as the higher modes. Reflections on low are also worse, which can give the water a more muddy or translucent look, similar to what happened with standard reflections. The performance difference here is significant. Moving from high to medium saw a 15% performance gain in areas with lots of water, like the river I was just showing. Yeah, high looks amazing, and it's one of those settings that really shows off what a PC can do given the water doesn't look nearly that good on consoles, but would I take somewhat better wave simulations and reflections or 15% more performance? I think for this game I'm taking the performance here, and given medium still looks great, it's my go-to choice here. What about volumetrics? This is often the most performance intensive setting in modern games. Developers seem to love cranking up their volumetric fog resolutions, but it doesn't have the same impact in Red Dead Redemption 2. Yes, it's performance intensive, but with effects like lighting quality, reflection quality, and water quality, it's not the worst in this game. Volumetrics affect the widespread use of fog in the game, especially in the swampy areas where fog is heavily used to provide a stench of the swamp lands. I don't know, it looks quite impressive in those areas though. It also impacts cloud density and quality, not necessarily the numbers of clouds you get, but the puffiness of the clouds. 
In all areas, the differences are very subtle. Fog is still dense and decent resolution, even on medium or low. Clouds are a little more obvious, I found. Ultra has much more complicated clouds compared to low, which is especially flat compared to the rest. Fog density is also slightly worse on low compared to medium, but outside of that, you'll be hard pressed to spot any major changes with higher volumetric levels. For performance, yeah, medium volumetrics quality is a good choice given it will deliver a 7% performance improvement pretty much across the board given how often volumetric effects are utilized. I'd almost recommend low here, but it's less than a frame faster most of the time and it looks slightly worse, so I figure medium is the perfect balance here. There's no significant difference to particle quality performance and it requires a restart to change, so I'd leave this on ultra. Tessellation quality mostly affects the quality of deformable areas of the terrain, such as snow and mud. I didn't spot much change elsewhere for terrain, but if you're making mud or snow trails with your character or horse, yeah, the differences here are pretty noticeable. Ultra has much better detail on these troughs with greater depth and smoother edges. It really falls away with medium and especially low, which looks flat and almost as if you didn't interact with the surface at all. Given there is such a small performance difference between each of these modes, I'd stick with Ultra for tessellation. If you have a much older card that can't run tessellation efficiently, maybe this is a setting you should consider turning down, but given modern cards are good for this effect, it's one I'd leave maxed out. How about Temporal Anti-Aliasing, or TAA? This is the main form of anti-aliasing in the game, and the one I'd expect most people will use, especially given the punishing nature of MSAA. It does a good job of reducing jagged edges and cutting out shimmering. Character hair in particular is very shimmery with TAA disabled and looks pretty awful. That's eliminated with TAA on. There is a slight reduction to sharpness with TAA enabled, but it's not the worst I've seen, and that can easily be corrected with modern sharpening filters available through both the AMD and NVIDIA control panels these days. As for which TAA mode you should use, there's not much difference between high and medium. Both deliver the main benefits of TAA like shimmering reduction and jagged edge reduction. High is slightly better at reducing jaggies, but it comes at a 1-2% to performance cost over medium, which is still pretty good. So I'd use medium here with a bit of additional sharpening if you find it too blurry. I'm not quite sure why FXAA is also available in the game given it's much worse than TAA, it's blurrier, and doesn't have the same ability to cut out shimmering. It also has a performance impact compared to not using FXAA, whereas TAA almost appears to be a lower cost, so I'd avoid this feature. And finally, we come to MSAA, which is a bonus feature for PC gamers that are already running on max settings and have performance to burn. There is no doubting the game looks phenomenal with high levels of MSAA, particularly 4x and 8x, but let's be honest, the performance hit is huge, and with TAA already reasonably decent, I don't expect this feature is something that many will use. Enabling 2 times MSAA delivered around a 17% performance hit, bumping up to 4 times we got a 30% hit, and then nearly 50% with 8 times MSAA on reasonably high-end cards. You'll get much larger visual improvements in my opinion, bumping up reflections, water, shadows, and lighting up to ultra, than using any MSAA option, often for a similar performance hit. So again, I think this is a last case choice. As I mentioned earlier, this is where we'll be stopping for now with our Red Dead Redemption 2 optimization. We'll be coming back and revisiting this with a look at the advanced settings in a later video, hopefully to get more performance gains. For now, let's see where we're at with the regular settings. There are lots of settings I would be turning down from Ultra in the game to achieve much better performance with minimal impact of visuals. As I said throughout the analysis, many of the Ultra quality modes here are either placebo quality or subtle enough that you'll be hard pressed to spot a difference in most situations. Yeah, things like ultra reflections and high water look great, they add to the realism of the game and look far better than what you can get with the console versions, but they really push PC graphics cards to the limits and only offer diminishing returns over what the game already provides. If you have a really powerful GPU and want to experience one of the most visually stunning games on PC with all the bonuses turned up for the ultimate experience, Sure, keep everything on Ultra, but for more performance conscious gamers struggling to hit 60fps or anyone that wants to prioritise frame rate for high refresh monitors, there are lots of easy changes to be made that still preserve the beauty of the Red Dead Redemption 2 game world. Here is what I'd recommend. Starting from a maxed out configuration, I'd drop lighting to medium, global illumination and both shadow quality modes I'd set to high, reflections, water quality and volumetrics all down to medium, and for anti-aliasing I'd use medium TAA with the other options set to off.
Making these changes delivers a 40 to 50% performance improvement in the final scene of the built-in benchmark, and at times in the game I've seen results that are higher than that. This takes a game that runs at 50 FPS to 75 FPS for example, which is a huge performance gain. It also allows Red Dead to run at almost always 60 FPS if previously on ultra settings you were down in the low 40s, which is great news. And let's not forget that in this configuration I still have all the advanced settings cranked up to the maximum, so in part 2 I suspect there will be further gains to be had. With my optimized settings I wouldn't say the game delivers amazing performance, but it's more in line with a modern visually stunning game, and even with so many settings on media it looks better than your average 2019 PC title. Rockstar probably could have avoided cries of poor optimization had they named some of the options differently. In many circumstances, the ultra modes could easily have become extreme or insane modes, while medium could have been bumped up to high or ultra. And if they had unlocked some of the below low modes seen on consoles, this potentially could have helped lower spec gamers as well. As it stands though, with these tweaks I've found it hard to spot significant visual differences in most areas of the game world while achieving around 40% more performance. In the best case scenarios I've seen my frame rate jump from 45 FPS to 75 FPS which is more than a 60% gain and makes the game much more playable. At night the gains can be even higher, taking a 35 FPS experience above 60 FPS which is a revolutionary difference in terms of smoothness and responsiveness. The differences are more obvious at night with that cutback to lighting quality, but again Again, Red Dead looks amazing with more modest settings. The more pressing issue with the game is the stability and crashing problems, which I encountered on a pretty regular basis while testing, especially when entering some of the townships. On the optimization front, yeah, things could be a bit better and some name changes would have helped, but I'm honestly not that upset with performance or visuals on a mixture of high and medium. The game either delivers insane visual quality with poor performance on ultra, or excellent visuals with acceptable performance with some optimized settings. It's definitely not a Fallout 76 situation where the game both runs and looks like crap, and it's better than Borderlands 3 as well, which is one of those recent not very well optimized titles. So I think calling the game poorly optimized is perhaps a bit unfair. What is not acceptable though is launching the game in a broken state and making PC gamers wait 12 months for the privilege. For a company with the resources of Rockstar and with the revenue they'll generate through Red Dead Online over the coming years, I think it's not good enough. And there's been lots of problematic game launches recently, but this is one of the worst in years and I think it's time for everyone to lift their game in that regard. That's it for this one. Subscribe to ensure you don't miss part two of our Red Dead Redemption 2 optimization guide. You can probably see why we've made this two parts as this video is already pretty long and there are still plenty of settings to go. Consider supporting us on Patreon if you like what we do or grab some merch from our store. Links in the description. Time to get back to testing. I'll catch you in the next one.